Welcome everyone, I'm Dale and this is Cinema Historia. The Roaring 1920s, 12 Children, and the Teachings of Unorthodox Parents. This week we're going back to 1950 for an autobiographical comedy film called Cheaper by the Dozen, starring Clifton Webb, Gene Crane, Myrna Loy, and Barbara Bates. And this is directed by Walter Lang. So, where does our story begin this week? Well, our story begins in Providence, Rhode Island. The year's 1921, and Frank Bunker Gilbreth Sr., played by Clifton Webb, and his wife Lillian, played by Myrna Loy, are in the midst of raising their 11 children, with one on the way. Frank is an industrial engineer or efficiency expert, showing industry how to save time, and Lillian is a psychologist. A typical day on the homestead is Frank employing unorthodox teaching methods on his children, for which he calls live bait, and the children clashing with their parents. Frank comes home from work one day to his children, however, and gives the news that we're moving to Montclair, New Jersey to be closer to my work. A few days of organized confusion, the family is packed and ready to depart in their automobile named Foolish Carriage. Upon arrival, the family settles into their new home in Montclair, New Jersey. Deciding their new home is too large for just two servants, the family council, as it's called, is called upon to assign new duties for the children. Daughters Anne Gilbreth, played by Jean Crane, and Ernestine Gilbreth, played by Barbara Bates, both upset, find more embarrassment when their father wants to film their tonsillectomies to see if there are ways to streamline the operation. Topping them all is Anne being escorted by her father as a chaperone to her prom and ends up chatting and dancing with her female friends. Soon after, Frank receives a letter inviting him on a lecture tour to Europe, expecting to visit Prague and London. Meanwhile, Lillian is feverishly getting ready to leave for the hospital to add another addition to the family, their 12th child. So. Are there more family embarrassments to follow? Does a chaperone become the hit of the prom? Or does an unexpected phone call change the direction of our story? Based on the 1948 novel Cheaper by the Dozen, written by Ernestine Gilbreth Carey and Frank Bunker Gilbreth Jr. This film is a 1951 Golden Laurel winner for top male comedy performance for Clifton Webb. An 86% rating from the film critic Rotten Tomatoes, stating Cheaper by the Dozen is a delightful chronicle that is jam-packed with wholesome messages and traditions. One of the most popular films of 1950. Variety called it a lot of fun with a lot of humor and just enough clutching at the heart to please any audience. And I would totally agree. And the trivia question this week, I'm going to take pity on you this week. How did a 1948 novel get its name? How did the 1948 novel get its name? So, a little more history and the answer to our trivia question, coming up next. This week for history, we're going to talk about two of the original 12 children, authors Ernestine Gilbreth Carey and Frank Bunker Gilbreth Jr. So, born Ernestine Mahler Gilbreth on April 5, 1908 in New York City. The third oldest of 12 children to parents Frank and Lillian Gilbreth, she grew up in Montclair, New Jersey. In 1929, Gilbreth graduated from Smith College as an English major. Gilbreth Carey found work as a buyer and manager for Macy's in 1930. She worked there until 1944 when her family moved to Long Island. Spending more time with her children, she soon realized she needed something more to do and began writing a fact-based draft of a novel about her childhood. 
When her brother Frank Jr. returned from service in World War II, their mother suggested that Gilbreth Carey share the novel with her brother, who had a pre-war profession in journalism. Cheaper by the Dozen was published in 1948 and was adapted as a 1950 film. The pair followed up with a successful sequel, Bells on Their Toes, which is, was adapted as a film in 1952. Sharing their stories and lives in the successful novels, Ernestine and Frank Jr. decided to share evenly amongst the siblings and their parents all royalties from both books and the movies based on them. Gilbert Carey went on to publish three more novels in the 1950s and later became the primary family historian as a speaker, securing the legacy of her two parents. Frank Jr., born March 17, 1911, the third child and first boy, was decorated with two air medals and a bronze from World War II and went on to publish eight more books from 1952 to 1993. And the parents? Well, Frank Gilbreth Sr. won the Award for Lifetime Achievement by the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineers. And in 1948, Dr. Lillian M. Gilbreth was honored Woman of the Year by the 20th Century Club of Buffalo and later became the first female engineering professor and first woman elected to the National Academy of Engineering. Amazing. And if you're wondering what's beside me, this is an unused Hillroy scrapbook of 1950s vintage. Yes. And my thumbnail, well, it comes from a mural, a, a mural at one of our local libraries in Colburn, Ontario, Canada. I highly recommend going there. You can sign out books and DVD movies. They have a preschool story hour and kids and family movie matinees and more. Go to crammylibrary.ca for more information. And the answer to our trivia question this week, how did the 1948 novel get its name? Well, funny enough, the title comes from one of Gilbreth's favorite jokes. When the family would be out driving and stopped at a red light, a pedestrian would usually ask, hey, mister, how come you got so many kids? Gilbreth then, just as the light turned green, would say, well, they come cheaper by the dozen, you know, and drive off. Pretty funny. And I hope everyone enjoyed this video. And before you drive off, can you help me? And click like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope to see you back next week. Well, is everybody in? And Ernestine, Martha, Mary, Frank? All President Econifor, Dad. Okay, if you're all reasonably sanitary, let's go. Bye.